Hi, and welcome back to another episode of the History of Fan Anime. I'm your host, William Chow. In today's episode, we're going to have a fun episode. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, how parents name their kids. And I'm going to use a few different examples of how uh, we've given sort of anime references and that goes up into some of our children's names. And uh, you know, also ask the kids themselves if they are aware of uh, how they got their names. All right, so before I continue, I'd like to like to go, to, go down below, click like, and click subscribe. And again, that helps the YouTube algorithm uh, do its you know thing and whatnot, uh, whatever, right? Uh, <clears throat> if you want to support me financially, I do have the Super Thanks button available, as well as the PayPal and Patreon links. Um, I'm currently uh, adding more episodes uh, onto the uh, Patreon so that uh, uh, you'll have more experiences about uh, my trip to China and that kind of stuff, as well as uh, some uh, special. Uh, uh, anti stuff that uh, I've got talked about and uh, got another box of, uh, of uh, mangas and that kind of stuff to go through. So again, those are all available uh, for the um, PayPal and subscribers for that, all right? So, today's topic, again, is uh, working on people's names and stuff. And again, you know, we talk uh, and have a lot of ideas and that kind of stuff when we think of, uh, you know, what we need for our child, children's name. We sometimes we think about um, you know, our grandparents and, you know, carry names and, and whatnot from that. Uh, sometimes it's from, you know, and, you know, some sort of ancestral type of thing. Um, I know in, uh, in Chinese and, and in some Japanese things, it's based off of a system, not necessarily like, uh, like the Zodiac or anything like that, but, you know, there are some sort of, um, you know, some traditional type of things, things based off of the uh, Chinese New Year, that kind of stuff. Um, or even just um, you know symbols of of uh, you know mythical um, you know beings and gods and, and and creatures and that kind of stuff like that. So you know people a lot of people have you know different things uh, in their history. So I'm going to go over a couple, uh, and then uh, as I uh, you know interview more people, uh, get into some of those interesting names because it's obviously when you're in the anime community, you know sometimes some of those influences sneak into the names. Okay. And uh, I'll explain those uh, in, in this particular episode, all right? So, without further delay, let's begin. What is your name? My name is Luna Maria. Luna Maria, okay. So when you introduce, your, uh, introduce yourself to, to your friends, uh, what is the typical response that you usually get? Or have you got any really interesting responses for that name? Oh, wow, very pretty. Oh, is it? Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. that's the usual response. Okay, now do you know how you got your name? Like which of, which of your parents gave you that name or? When my parents were trying to come up with a name for me, yeah. my dad took two songs he liked, okay. one called Luna, one called Maria, put them together, told my mom and she went, oh, I like it. Okay, all right, all right. So if you didn't come up with that, do you know what they would have named you or like you know, what were some of the, uh, the names that were on the docket? It, it, general theme of like, Hope. Okay, yeah, all right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this is some of the more modern names. Yeah. Hope. Uh, I don't remember. Yeah, that's fine. It's so, the general pattern of like hope. Wow, okay. my my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> usually in elementary school, the teacher usually puts the the, 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 the students uh, in front of class and they you know as an exercise to introduce themselves uh, and whatnot. Have you uh, ever had to do that? And um, has anyone ever asked you? Uh, you know, well, that's an interesting name. How did you get that? Oh, I, I just tell them the story about how my dad took two songs okay, and put them together. Cool. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, the way I usually present myself is my name is Luna Maria, uh, better known as Luna. Right, okay. Because that's what my friends call me. Okay, okay. All right. So, no, you know, your father took two songs, <laughs> I guess. I'm going to guess it's Eva Maria, probably, I guess. Because... One nice thing that is really interesting is that ever notice how there are more songs written about women, like having names of women in the name of the song, than let's say guys having names of women songs? Mm -hmm. And um, one thing that a lot of people do is they tend to name songs after women. Yes. So like, you know, Rihanna, um, <laughs> I think of many of the, uh, uh, Jenny is another one that mm -hmm. comes right, really to mind. When were you told the the, 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 the the story of your name? Uh, I asked one day, and he and my dad told me. Oh, cool. Okay. But I it was uh, I knew from a pretty young age, okay, like, like okay, right. five, 
four. Okay, yeah. So we're well, still in your elementary school. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. cool. All right. All right. Thank you for your time. So yes, this, the story of Luna Maria's name. So I'm Michael Peterson. I'm Luna Maria's father. And when we were trying to come up with Luna Maria's name, um, my wife had no idea what to name a girl. So um, I then started to prattle off all of my favorite names for, for uh, a female child. And so it started with Elizabeth, and then which was immediately denied, and then Rachel, which was going, no, immediate, and then Hope and Faith, which was like, no, no, no. And, and so I, I, at that point, that was the end of my list. And so I had been listening to La Luna and Ave Maria. So Sarah Brightman and Andre Bocelli. And I took from that and thought Luna Maria and blurted it out. And my wife said, so pretty. And that was the name. <laughs> now you were aware that this is also the name of a, a, an anime character? From yes, I, 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 from would, I would have known that <laughs> Luna Maria Hawk did exist because I had watched all of anime, uh, all of Gundam Sea Destiny. Uh, so all of the anime Gundam Sea Destiny, and I very much enjoyed the character of Luna Maria Hawk. I felt that she was well created, well rounded, and and yes, that would have been in my head. And so obviously, when I did the mashup of those two two songs, and coincidentally, because obviously I would have known of that, but. At the moment, no, it was just a mashup of the two song names. And then, of course, I say it and then realize later that, yes, it is a Gundam character. Okay. Um, so this is kind of a funny question then. Certainly. When you do, um, like, so when you signed her up at the, at the like, first school board, did you write Luna Marie as the first name? And then, or did you write Luna as the first name and then Marie as the, as the middle name? No, it's Luna Maria, as in Ave Maria. Yeah, yeah. So, so Ave Maria and, 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 and La Luna. So it was a single word, L-U-N-A-M-A-R-I-A. -A -A. Okay, and that so is yeah, what yeah. we registered her oh, at birth. Okay, yeah. so, so she I was registered at it's birth. It's a, a hyphenated name. No, it is not a hyphenated name. No. It is a single name, okay. exactly like Luna Maria Hawk. Okay. So, so it is spelled as yeah. a single name no no hyphens no abbreviations no uh demarcation between the luna and the maria it is one word cool. All right. now of course the, the the glory of that being if luna maria wishes to be if, if she found that no she didn't like part of it i mean obviously it would be easy enough for her to say oh call me maria or yeah. call me luna or call yeah. me luna maria and she's yeah. well thank you michael well thank you very much okay see you later. Do you know how you got your name? No. No? Did you remember in grade three, you had to go in front of your class and you had to introduce yourself? Yeah. Did the teacher ever ask you what uh, your middle name was? Mm -hmm. Yeah? How'd you answer? I can't remember. You can't remember? Because <laughs> you were in grade three, right? <laughs> your memory's not very good. So when I um, you know, thought of how we're going to deal with um, you know, uh, naming our son, um, I decided that, okay, well, you know, the first name, um, I wanted to be something that, that represented both, uh, me and my wife in some way, because obviously, you know, the, 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 a, a child is a union between two people, right? So, you know, you want to have some sort of representation in some way, uh, some form symbolically, you know, uh, in some way, right? So, so I kept that in my mind and trying to figure out what I could do to, to mix the two together, to get that one, right? Um, <clears throat> then I decided, okay, well, I want something to, you know, uh, to, and we're working with the middle names now. I wanted to, to let my wife come up with, you know, one name or something that, that, you know, that, that she can have ownership on and have her. So I said, okay, you decide on, on, on one name and then that will be the middle, one, uh, one of the middle names. And then I will decide on a, on a, on a separate one. And then we'll have that as, as an, uh, another middle name, right? So we'll start with the first character, uh, the first uh, name. It came, um, we came up with Trevor, and the way it came up was is that I started thinking of, of symbols and and, uh, and and whatnot, uh, things things that are having to do with zodiac and and whatnot, and, and um, you know 
um, character animals and that kind of stuff, right? So, um, <clears throat> when I first met my wife, I remember she kept on, uh, you know, saying that, the, 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 you know, that, that she, you know, she was a tiger. It wasn't because that she was born in the year of the tiger. She just has, you know, um, the, the fieriness and whatnot uh, as, uh, you know, as of a tiger, right? So, so she, she, she always referred to herself as a tiger. So I said, okay, I can probably work with that. So I looked up what the, what, what a symbol for a tiger is. And, um, you know, in Chinese, it, 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 it's he, right? So, um, and this is kind of difficult because it said, you know, it doesn't, it probably doesn't mix really well with other words, especially when you, you know, the farther away you get away from like, like English phonetics and that kind of stuff, it really becomes really difficult to mix. But I, but I, but I worked with it. I said, okay, tiger, okay, I can sort of um, well, work with that sort of thing, right? So I tried the different combinations and I thought, okay, well, let's see what, the, well, you know, if that doesn't work, um, I decided, okay, well, if it doesn't work in Chinese, um, because she is, um, you know, Mandarin Chinese, uh, I thought, okay, well, <clears throat> let's try something that I'm a little more familiar with. I decided, let's look at it in Japanese. In Japanese, the word for tiger is Tora. Uh, and if you may remember the World War II book uh, about Pearl Harbor, uh, the, the Japanese book novel called Tora, 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 with tiger, 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 right? Uh, in, in regards to the, uh, the, you know, the Japanese zero fighters and stuff like that, right? Um, you know, that is the reference for tiger. So I said, okay, Torah, all right, so, okay. That we can probably maybe work, I might have a little bit easier time working with. Okay, so I thought, okay, let's look at myself now. Okay, so I, you know, I'm normally a Gemini, right? And um, I was, you know, born in the year of the sheep. And so I started trying thinking, okay, what can I do with, you know, with, with that? Maybe I can do you know, something with twins or can I maybe do with, like, you know, um, you know, try to work with different translations of the word sheep and that kind of stuff. And that, then, that in the end didn't really work. Um, I couldn't figure out how to maybe figure out words and that kind of stuff that, 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 that made, that work with that suffix. Um, however, um, you know, the one thing that, that, that sort of kind of came across was that I remember I was going to the, uh, I was, uh, you know, in her city and, uh, we I went to the, uh, arcade that's, uh, on the top floor of this shopping mall, right? See, um, as I explained in my videos on the Patreon channel, um, one of the things that, that is common in a lot of the um, Asian malls is that a lot of the kids stuff, as well as a lot of the food courts and that kind of stuff, are located on the highest floor um, of these complexes because it requires the, you know, the parents and the kids to go through the entire mall and get up to the very top floors uh, in order to go through all the shopping and all the all, and all the shops to get to those type of resources and that kind of stuff, and so uh, sometimes uh, what they'll do is they'll locate the you know the game centers and that kind of stuff on the top floor of these places. And this, this particular mall, that's how uh, that's how they did. They put the the uh, g the game center uh, at the top, and inside this game center, they had one of these uh, you know these kind of combination you know dance dance revolution slash uh, you know hand sort of versions i do believe the game was called easy do dance or a variation of that kind of a game um and it's, it's pretty rare because that they're like you know generally speaking they don't make their own machines for the kinds of this these are usually japanese consoles that they that you know that kind of you know fell out of favor in the you know in the japanese arcade and they kind of kind of you know import them over um uh, in into China, and they imagine so they happen to have this really old, you know, easy to do dance uh, game, and um, you know, so you know, I, I've practiced a little bit of this, you know, when I was with, um, you know, uh, at uh, G Spot down in Richmond, they had uh, they had one of these machines, and I, you know, I played it a little bit because I said I'm used, I'm you know, I'm fair at Dance Dance Revolution. I mean, like I can do like, you know, paranoia at, at you know, I can do a five foot paranoia. I can do a seven foot. Uh, uh, you know, something like, um, yeah, yeah, a Paranoid a Remix, I can do a 7, so, you know, um, I wasn't bad at doing, you know, Dance Dance Revolution, um, you know, I can, I can do, uh, the Extreme Mode on Para Para, so, and I've shown you videos of that, kind of thing. so I thought, okay, okay, I, I, you know, I should be fairly okay, just, you know, just go, go getting back into this game, and so I got onto this game, playing this game, and, like, I really amazed everyone, because, first of all, no one plays this game because a first of all, it's really, really to you know to have money to you know to play these kind of games you know it does cost you know you know roughly like a dollar so it's like you know six uh you know it, it 
Yeah, about yeah, probably like a dollar to play the game. So it's like it's it's, it's like a you know about six, you know, six yuan or something like that. For, you know, for that kind of thing, right? Which is kind of expensive because you, know, you could probably buy, you know, uh, you know, a lot of food, <laughs> um, you know, more food than, than than you know you would waste on you know just playing this game, right? So. Um, but you know, again, it didn't bother me, right? Because that's my usual price that that you would normally pay at an arcade for that, right? But yeah, uh, um, but that's you know, so it's not just that; it's just the fact that um, you know, a person of my age, you know, you know, in, in that case, you know, I was, you know, in my forties, being able to play this game and being able to play it better than most of the teenagers that are already in there playing that, you know, playing this kind of game, um, you know, it's kind of amazed and grabbed at the crowd. Anyway. My wife made the comment that, oh, my elephant can dance, all right? And so, you know, that sort of uh, you know, made me think, okay, well, maybe, um, you know, she sees me uh, or sees my symbol as an elephant. So I thought, okay, okay, what can I do with an elephant? So, you know, I, I, I've tried Gemini. I've tried, uh, you know, the, my, my uh, sheep symbol or you know, my Chinese zodiac symbol. And so I tried, so I said, okay, well, elephant, okay. Um... Well, yeah, using uh, the Japanese form of of, of elephant, the wizard shou, and uh, you know, and look at the Chinese version, that's even harder. Um, yeah, that sort of didn't work. However, the one thing that sort of kind of clicked was the short form of Japanese uh, abbreviation or pet name for it, which is elfu, which is you know short for elephant. It sounds more like elf, e l e l f, but because of the you know, the ending of has to be ended in the vowel, the 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 l f sound, right at the end. So that sort of worked. So then I took the two together and I tried to combine it, and then you know kind of hold your tongue a little bit, and you get Torah and you get l f u, Torah l f u, Torah l f u, Torah l f u, right? Try to you know hold the two tones, and that's sort of how I came up with the word Trevor. Okay, and so that's the origin of his first name. So it's a combination of our two symbols, uh, animal symbols, put together to create his first name. The second symbol in his name, which is his middle name, um, I wanted my wife to be able to come up with you know her own you know name or whatever, whether she wants to to name it after you know one of her parents or a symbol or whatever, uh, you know, totally up to her. Um, so she ended up deciding to uh, use the word Wei. Okay, now this particular version of Wei in Mandarin uh, r- represents the symbol for uh, like a wall, as in like uh, all encompassing. Okay, that's sort of the the the, the meaning. It's like um, it is a uh, kind of uh, you know all inclusive, encom- you know, it encompasses both of our cultures, right? So it's like the wall of a castle holds the castle in, right? And everything inside the castle, sort of idea. So I said, okay, well, that's fine. You know, that if that's what your choice is, uh, you know, that's what we'll, you know, that, that's what you use, right? So that is um, how he got his middle name, which is Wei. Um, so then it's my turn to come up with, uh, you know, an abbreviation or, or something for his second middle name. Okay. And it took me a while to figure out, you know, what else I could use, to, you know, to do something like this and, and come up with a name. So I thought about it and, uh, one of the, uh, you know, names that, uh, that sort of transpired and I thought of is that Trevor was born in the year of the cow or the ox. That when parents they usually give them affectionate pet names. For a cow, the the the, the affectionate name is Nu Nu. Now the real origin of this is this is an odomatopoeia. Okay. Now um, if you take something like Maisonikaku, and you notice that uh, you know many pictures of Maisonikaku, Kyoko is wearing an apron with the you know with with a baby chick on it, and and the words on it on on the apron is Pio Pio. Okay. That is an onomatopoeia. That's a word that sounds like the word that is spelt the way it sounds. Okay, um, in Japanese, of course, they, they they have the idea that that a chick's sound is pio pio, right? Um, in Mandarin, okay, the sound that a cow makes is not moo like we do because they don't have an m o o long o sound in Mandarin. Okay. Um, so the, the what they use for the automatopoeia for a cow sound is new, okay? So instead of moo, it's new, right? So um, so I thought, okay, maybe what I'll do is I'll try to 
in, in, incorporate that into his name. But the problem is that if you go N-U, then that's kind of like, or N-E-W or something like that, that, you know, th th doesn't seem like, uh, you know, kind of a, it, it seems very, very strange that, 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 you know, you would use something like that or have that in the name. You don't want to put the word cow or anything like that in the name because then, of course, then he gets picked on because that's, a, you know, it becomes a really silly name, right? And that's, a, you know, a, a point of, of bullying, right? So you don't want to put, you know, you don't, you don't give your kids weird names in that respect. So I thought, okay, well, what else can I use it? And then I realized, you know, new is exactly uh, the same kind of pronunciation that kind of stuff that I'm looking for as in new Gundam. Okay, so new, obviously, in that case, I thought, okay, well, new Gundam is new as a new the Greek symbol. V there, it's not actually a V; it's a new. So I thought, okay, perfect. What I'll do is I'll give him the middle name of new. But I won't write it as NU. I'll write it as the the, the Greek symbol V. Um, this, of course, you know, you know, this is why I I ask and I trigger the question. Um, you know, uh, when what happens uh, when you go into your grade three class? Because usually, what happens is in elementary school, uh, the teacher will you know, as part of you know, um, presentations and, and kind of uh, you know. Uh, public speaking, shall we say, practice, is they'll get the students to come up to the front of the class, they'll introduce themselves, and then they'll, you know, maybe tell, you know, have them say a little bit of something about themselves, right? And what usually happens, okay, is that, you know, usually if, uh, you know, especially when I went to elementary school, um, you know, usually when the teacher, uh, you know, comes up and, and, and notices something interesting about your name, uh, usually it is things like, oh, your name is you know, blank, you're not related to the other, you know, name that has, that's always, and then, then you'll realize, okay, yeah, that's my younger sister, that's my older brother, and that kind of stuff, because again, you know, when, when you go to school in a small town, or, you know, especially when you go to school at all, and, um, you know, all your siblings tend to go to the school, same school, so if they end up with the same teacher, then they kind of wonder, okay, well, you've got a, uh, you know, a, a rather unique name, or kind of a little, uh, uh, you know, very rare name, um, I had a student that also had that same name. Are you related? Are you whatever? And that kind of stuff. That's usually you know one of the things that that, that the teachers point out. But you know, given the indication that, that they'll probably do that, they'll probably go through his um, you know uh, class list and then they'll see Trevor Way V Chow. And then, then of course that you know the first first thing they'll think is V, like just just the letter V, like you know. And then of course the question will be. Um, V, what is that? Is that like short for like, you know, Victor or Vincent? And then, of course, you know, the answer would be, well, that's not actually a V. That's a, that's a new. And it's like, <laughs> you know, the, the Greeks go new and it stands for new, new, you know, and that's, you know, again, an, an onomatopoeia for my, um, for the sound that a cow makes because I was born in the year of the cow or the year of the ox, right? So anyway, that's so that's the origin of of, of uh, you know uh, th th how Trevor's name got created. And again, you know, this is one of these sort of exercises that uh, you know that, that I'm sure many parents sort of think uh, or don't think about at all. They just sort of pick popular names, or if they get really lazy, they just pick names that you know they've already had. You know, their their father's name or their grandfather's name. They just you know, uh, you know, they just repeat the same name, i.e., you know, George W. Bush, for example. You know, just no originality in names whatsoever. So I thought this was sort of an interesting exercise of how, uh, you know, some of the people in my anime community have came up with some of the names uh, when they came to name their ch uh, their children. All right, I hope you find that kind of genius. You know, it's a, a slight deviation from the norm, but, you know, again, I thought it was a rather interesting topic that, uh, you know, that, that kind of sprung up as I sort of did some, you know, uh, you know, data gathering and, and some statistics for my other half of the episodes I'm doing. Um, uh, you know, the, it's not life as you know it. Um, putting together some data and that kind of stuff about the people that are in uh, the anime community around me. And uh, these are just things I just kind of noticed that were kind of, you know, a little strange, a little, you know, maybe a, a little bit of an interest. And, um, you know, uh, one of the things that, that's always um, that I found kind of missing in modern day is it's just how much connection we have uh with our community around us i mean not just you know just sitting on you know behind your computer just doing 
you know, textual talking and that kind of stuff, or just uh, uh, you know, uh, what we experience over Twitch or anything like that. Like actual, um, you know, human connection, uh, meeting in a personal type of type of, of, of an atmosphere. Uh, it's just something that maybe is a little uh, lacking in the, in the modern day, and so that's why I always tell people that kind of, you know, m you know, make yourself out, get out there, participate in different events that that actually. Um, you know, put you in touch with different people because I think the, the, you know that sense of community and that sense of belonging is just something that uh, we no longer seem to have as much, uh, you know, as as we did before. And uh, you know, I think that's just, just you know, it's kind of a one of the things that, that I think is really still very very important. And uh, you know, I do keep um, and have uh, you know a very good connection and a very large anime community that still exists here in Vancouver. Uh, with anime, alright? So, until next time, I will see you again.